Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at how to create ARM animation using FK and IK. All right, in After Effects. So you can see that uh, I'm going to loop this. I have two similar arms doing two similar actions, but both are animated using uh, FK and IK. Okay, FK means forward kinematics and IK means inverse kinematics. What it means is that if I want to animate this hand, forward kinematics means this is the parent and this arm is parented to this arm and this hand is parented to this arm. So if I want to move this up, I will have to rotate this and then I'll have to rotate this and then I'll have to position this. So in order for the child to move, the parent has to move. And in the inverse kinematics, if I want this arm to move here, I can simply click on the arm and move it. And the parents will move with when the child moves. Okay, So it is the inverse of uh, what happens here. All right. So let us look at that into After Effects, how it works. So I have an FK arm. So you can see that there are three elements, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. And then I have animated the rotate properties. So when, when this has to go up, I have to rotate this one first, and then I'll have to rotate this one, and then the other one will rotate. Okay. So that's how FK works. And if I double click on IK, I'm using the Dwick Bezel uh, plugin uh, and it creates bone systems. So you can see that there are bones which I've hidden. And then there is a control and I simply have to move the control around, okay, to animate the arm. So I have to animate the position and the rotation options and you can see that those actions have been created here all right so let us look at uh, first do it bezel so you have to go online and look for do it bezel okay and it is by rainboxlab.org so if you go to do it bezel Okay, it is rainboxlab.org. Okay, so you will have to download the file. Okay, and once the file is downloaded, it has to be in the right place. So if you go to your PC, go to C drive, program files, Adobe, After Effects, support files, scripts show UI panel and there I have copied the doing basil dot JSX file okay so you have to find this file uh, when you download it and copy it there got it once that is there uh, after effects turn after effects off and uh, turn it off and open it again and then you will see do it basil all right so i'm going to go and start a new project all right new composition so 12 80 720 three seconds of animation 24 frames per second that is what i always use white color background is good and first thing we do is create the forearm Right, so the rectangle stroke, sorry, not the stroke, the rectangle path. I will make the roundness round enough. Okay, it's the first step. Look at it and name it um, Control D. Right click for arm. Okay, so I got two elements. 
now to model the hand i'm going to use the pen tool so just simply click 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 and click okay so this is going to be the and control x it has to be in a separate layer so i will create it again better okay so now it started with a new shape so click two one two three four five six and back okay okay and then we will for the double click on it go and convert this to everything becomes we need roundness here we need roundness here roundness here roundness here everything has to be round so this is the middle finger it has to be longer the pinky finger this can be wider this is our thumb area can use the alt key to break it so I'm breaking control That's how you break it. Yep. So that way you can create some nice curves and thumb. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time modeling the hand, but you get the idea of how it is done. Okay, so that is too big, you can scale it down. Finger looks too big. Okay, so that's good looking hand. Now we place this here, and place this here. So got to align it properly. This needs to be aligned properly as well. What we can do is open T and make this 80%. So we can see how the connections work so we need a nice circle here and we need a nice circle here as well so if you double click this this element goes here this element can go here and we can bring this up So that's how the arms are going to be animated. That looks good to me if you want to 
model around some other way. I don't want to spend too much time on it. So what we do is now P for opacity. This is hand. Okay. So arm is on top, forearm is on bottom, and hand is at the bottom. Okay. So arm will connect to forearm, forearm will connect to arm. Okay. And now we're going to animate this so you can see that oh, it's going all over the place. So we need to fix the anchor point of each of these. So the anchor point of the arm will be on top. So this is like the middle. Okay. And then this will be in the center of the circle. And the hand will be in the center of the circle here. Okay. So now if you select the hand and rotate it around, it should rotate properly. And then if you select the arm rotation, it should rotate properly. Okay. So we'll select all these arms and go up a little bit and the arm will go back a little bit okay so this will be our shift all and add a keyframe okay so after 12 frames after six frames actually we will animate the arm going up what I like to do is select all the three and rotate it going up and then the hand will come down because we don't want the hand to break so slightly above okay so we got our first animation done so what is going to happen is that there's going to be some follow through so we are using six frames here so will you count four one two three four okay and i'll select all of these actually what i will do is i will not use the arm okay so again i'll count one two three four and just the forearm and the hand will come down the hand is a little bit and then one two three four Control V, control three, control V, control three, control V. So you can see that the arm okay. So that's the record. So now it is going to go back. So we'll count eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then I'll select all of these. The animate back. Hand cannot break. So the hand will come back. This looks broken also. So this should come back. Okay. So it went back and gave some follow through. So again, one, two, three, four. Forearm and hand will come back. 
okay and then the hand looks too much so we will move the hand back okay and then one two three four five six control v control v control v control v control c control v so now we got here and here the one, two, three, four, five, six. Control C, Control V, it will go back to its original place. Then again, one, two, three, four. Four arm and hand are going to go back. The arm went too much. One, two, three, four, five, and two. Control C, Control V. Control C, Control V. C, Control V. Okay, so now everything is looking quite mechanical. So we will add is, easy ease. And it will give nice smoothness to it. I can see that the arm is animated. So this is forward kinematic. Uh, in order to animate this, we have to animate this and this. So you can see we have animated all the three rotation properties of the forward kinematics. Now the good thing about forward kinematics is if it's a free moving object, forward kinematics works well because there's one principle which is called any action happens happens in an arc so you can see because we are rotating around a pivot everything is going to move nicely in arcs okay but that does not happen in ik and when we model when we animate the ik hand you will need you will understand how we create the curves manually in the ik and also uh, ik we will only animate one controller instead of animating all the three so that's about it next class we'll look at ik and then we'll compare mk and ik